Rockets are actually a bunch of mad lads, but I quite like mad lads. So let me tell you how they've taken two 12 inch subwoofers, strapped it to your head and called it a headset. Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Total Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety of Wookie Triple XL. In front of me are the Rocket Sun Pro Airs. Now, this review nearly went very badly because of Windows. Microsoft, I hate that you just enable things by yourself. All right? Thank goodness I figured it out because it changed the outcome of this review so massively. I actually can't even put it into words. Bill Fitzak. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go through things from the top down. So, package contents. What do you get? Headset. You also get USB 3 dongle with Type-C attachment adapter. Thing we could, and this is going to be very important later. Trust, there's something else that I figured out. And then they give you a USB Type-C braided charging cable. Very nice because it does have fast charge and it will do 15 minutes charge. They give you 5, well, 15 minutes charge for 5 hours battery life which is pretty sick. And in under an hour, it'll charge to full and with the lights on, you'll get about 15, 16 hours. So that's very good going. But what about the headset itself? So starting off with the poles, as you can see, they can rotate completely. There's no measurement tool for these going up and down, but they're pretty taut in there. I actually saw someone complaining, saying that these would slip when they were busy just putting them down and stuff. You probably had a defective pair because that's what you have to do to get it to go down. So normal like taking off and putting on and lying them flat on your desk like that. There we go. So doing that to on is not going to change generally. It would have been nice to have some measurements numbers there though, just so you can see exactly what level they are at to get that comfort if you're taking them traveling or something like that. A little bit nitpicky. The cushions on the top and the bottom are their memory foam, their Pro Specs memory foam. So you can wear glasses with them and it won't bend the sides of your shades or your glasses. So not to disrespect if you're looking for a new set of headphones, because I know you can't be seen without your glasses then. There you go. The fit of the headset is toit, especially on, once again, my absolutely massive noggin. I just keep running into this issue. Maybe I'm not the best person to test headset <laughs> sizing because of that. I think if you're a normal sized person, it's going to be quite comfortable. And you can see how far they come back in towards each other. So even if your head is super narrow, it should sit quite snugly. As far as controls go, on the left side cup, you have the main volume slider, you have the power button and a USB type C. Then next to that, is the microphone and this is one of the most interesting parts of this headset the head the well head, i'm going to try and actually get the recording of that on the mic when you do this there you go you can hear it activating the mic so it mutes automatically there we go there's the doo -doo i was waiting for it mutes automatically when you do slide it up and down but it's also removable and that's actually the first time i've seen a microphone with this kind of setup then finishing it off on the left side cup is your chat volume mixer. This is literally just so you can hear the mic playback through the headset, pretty much. The headset is completely plastic, but the overall build quality is very, very good. It is actually better than the Elo Wireless as well, which I thought were on average to above average, and at the price point didn't make me think that they were going to be a poor investment decision, etc. But these are quite a lot better, and they're actually quite light. This headset is 311 grams, if I'm not mistaken. I did experience some fatigue, but it wasn't from the weight. It was more just, like I say, the crushing impact of normal headphones on my ridiculously sized head. I've been able to buy one cap in my adult life. One that's fit my head. So all around, it's a pretty decent package. Run of the mill these days for what you normally get with wireless headsets. These do also work with PS5 and with Nintendo, although on the PS5 you have to adjust in the PS settings itself. I think they'll probably update that as time goes along and you'll probably find this and this will get a firmware update and then it will be able to use that because the volume slider works seamlessly with PC and with Android. 
Because this is a Type-C, I thought, let me just take a chance. And I connected it to my S9 and it did work, albeit, okay, at about half of the normal max volume level. It doesn't give very good volume, but it did work. And that's actually not listed anywhere that I can see around their product. So maybe, hey, Rocket, I may have figured something out. This, by the way, Galaxy S9 Edge, um, this works and you just plug it in. I don't even know if there's an S9 Edge. So this is what I know about GSM. I just use a phone, okay? My business partner gives me a phone and I use that phone. I'm not a big phone guy, but this worked in that. It does stick out, as you can see from the profile. So I probably wouldn't have it like on top of this in my pocket, but maybe coming out the top and you walk around with it on, or you put it down and you walk around with a headset on, you should be able to do that. It didn't penetrate very well through walls, the wireless, but line of sight was more than enough, like five to 10 meters, no problems. So now what about the most important part of this, the actual audio quality in the speakers? So there's 50 millimeter neodymium magnets, which they are calling NanoClear. It's their own like variety special edition headset type of speaker. It's basically a really good Turtle Beach speaker that they've put in each side of this thing and then given it a couple of extra little enhancements. And some of them are actually really, really good. One thing I can tell you is the superhuman hearing is real. It actually does work and it does make a difference on your audio positioning because basically what it does is it marks up all of the mid-range sounds that are predominant in gaming. So things like gunshots, snaps of bullets coming past you, reloading sounds, all of those mid-range clicks and clanks get marked up and in so doing you can kind of hear further. So it's kind of like having built-in hardware cheats. Another thing that was like super awesome was the 3D audio. It kind of changed my life. Now the thing is, in a game like CSGO for instance, where it has really good audio already, and Steam has spent an immeasurable amount of time on this for stereo and making it, it doesn't really have an effect. It does give you a 3D spatial effect in it. That's the most like comforting audio processor I've ever heard. It was kind of like being in a wonderful subritic womb. I had no idea where stuff was coming from because it was interfering with the game's own positional audio like in CS, but it felt really good. Whereas like something like Tarkov, which has rubbish positioning audio, literally people are walking on a floor above you. Have you, have you ever heard someone walking on top of you in a shopping center, like through a floor? That happens in Tarkov, okay? That's how bad the audio design is. It's probably the worst part about the game. But this helped just make it a little bit better and quite a lot more tolerable. Now the standard tone for these is quite interesting and it's why I say that things were almost done poorly. The audio that Windows, the audio settings and everything that Windows had put on it, they aren't even checkboxed. If you don't click that box to disable all audio effects, it still does something to affect the, the layout of the audio and the tone that you get from these headsets. These are some of the most basic headsets I've ever used in my life. That's what I said. It feels like there's two 12 inch, maybe even 15 inch star sound, 3000 watts with monoblocks strapped to the side of my head. I actually went into the EQ and turned it down slightly, which is a first. Um, just to, that gave it a bit more of a flat profile. So for media, if you're onto things like EDM and hip hop and anything with some 808 slapping, these are gonna slap extra hard. Of course, in gaming, that just makes your explosions and boom effects and plume effects from sounds just, well, carry that much more. It does give you that effect of like, like, it, it's good. It's very good there. Are. The only caveat in using these headphones now that I was like, why have you done this? Is their Neon software, which is still in beta and some of the RGB functions didn't work. Everything else worked flawlessly. Just setting up custom RGB for the ear caps didn't really work only the amo default setting ran normally the other ones it like flashes for a second and then it goes off and that's with the firmware updated i did do the firmware update to both the dongle and the headset so i don't know what else to do there to make it work like i said it is still in beta so we'll probably see that get fixed in the near future the idea is that neon is going to replace the swarm software in the future it does look very nice and does work where it works quite seamlessly and look good like on layout and stuff. So hopefully they'll be able to fix that soon. Now these headsets are not that cheap though. 250 USD is on the upper towards the high end as it were and generally in pricing. It's gonna be well over 3000 Rand in, because our currency in South Africa pretty much sucks. So yeah, we are gonna pay a little bit of a premium for that. I think the package and stuff 
that you get everything is pretty average for that price. The build quality and stuff is more or less what I'd want to see. The audio quality, however, is that good old Turtle Beach vibes. And because you have access to that EQ, you can actually tune it to becoming a really good set of sound quality headphones, as well as a gaming set. So you can just easily turn on and off your superhuman hearing when you're not in games, so that you get the really good media stuff. And then you can leave it connected to your PC and walk around listening to your Spotify and stuff. That portion, I'm gonna give it a big thumbs up. I would like it to be also a little bit bigger to cater to us that have Easter Island heads. That would be very nice of you to rock it. But all in all, this is by far their best headset. No, no shadow of a doubt anymore. This is, this is better than the ELO wireless, which are still very good. I think the value proposition on those is a little bit better. The other thing is the mic quality is not great. I did put it through NVIDIA broadcast and I was literally complained at for 30 minutes until I switched back to my other much larger diaphragm mic <laughs> because people are spoiled and that's what they used to. So eventually I just did. It still works though. It's going to be fine for chat and it's going to be fine if you're not trying to become a professional singer or anything to that effect. If anything, what you should be looking at for these for if you are really into like bass heavy media and movies and that sort of stuff, because it's not just a gaming headset. It can be set up to be in that gaming mode or in the multimedia mode. That's what you should be looking at it for. Anyway, that is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please hit us up with a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. Burn, my thirst and desire